Now it's time for the pinnacle of syrupy desserts, lemon babas. Oh, I adore these. A little bun soaked in a lemon syrup and then filled with a lemon curd. I do love my lemon desserts. And I want to start by making the curd because it needs time to chill. So to start the curd, I've got a third of a cup of butter that I'm going to add to a pot on medium heat and six tablespoons of sugar. I'll just measure that from the measuring cup. And to immediately start drawing out the lemon flavor, I add the zest. I need about two teaspoons. And I have a quarter cup of fresh lemon juice. It's really about the juice of one lemon. I'll break a single egg into that. And lastly, I need a little bit of cornstarch, just a teaspoon. And I'm going to add that to my cool lemon juice, because whenever you add cornstarch, you want to first mix it in with a cool liquid before you heat it up. I'll grab a whisk here, give everything a little stir. I just wait until the butter's melted before I add the lemon juice mixture. When you're cooking your lemon curd, you want to whisk constantly and have it on no higher than medium heat. All right, I'm done. I'll pour this through a strainer, just so it is nice and smooth. And while it may seem a little fluid now, remember, you've got a third of a cup of butter in there. And once it's chilled, that sets up and makes the lemon curd spoonable, pipeable, spreadable, a beautiful consistency. As this cools to room temperature on the counter, I keep it covered with plastic wrap right on the surface of the curd. That way, I won't get a skin. So now while that cools, I can work on the baba, the dough itself. I'll start with the dry ingredients. Three quarters of a cup of flour, a tablespoon of sugar, now a teaspoon and a half of instant yeast. I'll break in a single egg, and then I have some water that's warm. Just above body temperature is ideal. I want six tablespoons in this recipe. And this makes a really wet, sticky dough, which is why it's actually much easier to do by hand. Don't bother with the mixer or electric beaters here. Mm. Well, with that quantity of yeast, you can really smell it. And now the last addition is two tablespoons of butter. And what I do is place single layers of butter on top of the batter, and I don't mix it in yet. I'll do that after it's had time to rise. Because of that large quantity of yeast, this only has to sit for 30 minutes, and whoa, it really gets big. I told you it gets big. Look at that. It's more than doubled in volume. And seeing those big, airy holes gives you a sense of what that texture is going to be inside the baba. And now, I actually want to knock out all this air and coax it back to life. That develops flavor inside the dough or the batter. So again, you kind of beat it up a little bit. You can really feel that batter has transformed. It's kind of slippery. Now I've got my pan to bacon. I'm using a silicone mold with a cannelase shape with the little indentations. It just dresses it up a little bit. And if you don't have one of these tins, well, a mini muffin tin would work wonderfully well. Because of the sloppy dough, I find it easiest to use a piping bag. So I'll fill the bag first. And then you only need to fill your molds halfway. They actually double, in fact, more than double in size by the time they bake. All right, now this has to sit for another 30 minutes. And after the 30 minutes, see, I promised they'd double in size. 
These are ready for the oven. I've preheated it to 375, and these take 18 to 20 minutes. Can really smell the butter. Ooh, these look so nice. And what I'm going to do is make a simple syrup to soak the babas in. I start with half a cup of sugar, and I add to that half a cup of water. And I'll just bring this up to below a simmer. Basically, all I need to do is make sure the sugar is fully dissolved. There we go. I'll pour this into a bowl. I'll add, for just the right amount of tartness, two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. So with the baklava, I poured the hot syrup over top. In this case, I used tongs and I dunk the little babas right in. They do hold their shape, so you can actually let them really soak up those juices. And then I give them just a little squeeze, just so there's not too much in there dripping out. There we go. Now it's time to fill them with the lemon curd. I've got my lemon curd chilled and in a piping bag, and this long tip is a donut filling tip, so it's easy to get the lemon curd right into the center of the baba. But a small plain tip would work just as well. Pick up your baba, drop that tip right in the center, and then fill it with the lemon until you feel the resistance. Pull the tip up, and then I like a little capper of the lemon curd right on top. I hope you take all of these sweet and sticky ideas to your own kitchen to bake and enjoy. Mmm, mm mm-hmm. I've got sticky fingers. Mmm.